My number one tip for a more organized home is to have less in it so that you don't need to organize as much. Clearing out clutter and items that you don't use, it's not just good for your home, it's good for you too. Clutter can have a negative impact on your life. It doesn't feel good to live in a home that's tricky to keep clean and tidy. Trying to clean around everything is difficult and it takes longer and it's more effort. It's hard to keep track of what you already own and that can lead to double purchases, which is costly expenses that you're not expecting. And you feel guilty when you realize you've spent money on something you didn't actually need. And it's not much fun having people over if you don't feel good about the space that you live in. But decluttering your home can feel like a really overwhelming job, especially if you're already busy juggling work and family and life. So instead of worrying about clearing out your entire home, let's just start with three simple things that you can let go of more easily when you take the right approach to it. These quick wins are going to help get the ball rolling and inspire you to think of other smaller decluttering projects to work on over time. The first one is your junk drawer. I know this sounds crazy. If there's no junk drawer, where will you put the junk? Well, either you're going to find a place for it to properly belong or you'll just let it go. Most of what's in your junk drawer is stuff that you've forgotten about or you hardly use or you just haven't put it away properly yet. Free up that drawer for something more important and you'll love how useful it is. The next one is to declutter half of your kids' toys. Every home I've ever organized, my home included, has more toys than the kids ever need. Toys are crammed into bedrooms or playrooms or they're stuffed into toy boxes or baskets and cupboards and the kids just have completely forgotten they even existed. When you stand at the doorway and you look into the room, do you see toys or do you see clutter? If it's the latter, it's time to take some toys away. And yes, I recommend doing this without the kids. You know which toys your kids love the most and you know which ones they play with. But if you try and declutter when the kids are with you, then every single toy that you pick up will be their favorite and it'll be impossible for them to let go of it. It's gonna be a stressful situation for everybody. So do it when the kids aren't home or do it when the kids are busy. If a big declutter session feels overwhelming or you can't find enough kid-free time to do it, then just take baby steps instead. Wait until the kids are busy playing in another room or they're watching a favorite show or a movie and then just grab one big bag, pop a couple of toys in it and then put the bag away. Then you just repeat that every day until the bag is full. And when the bag is full, you put it in the back of your car, ready to donate when you drive past a donation bin or an op shop or a thrift store. If you're still stressed about accidentally giving away a much loved toy, then you can put the bag in your garage with a label on the outside that has the date three months from now. If within that three months, none of the kids have asked for anything in that bag, you know you're okay to donate it. And the third one is clothes that you don't enjoy wearing. There are lots of good reasons that people keep clothes they don't wear and love. You know, they might not fit now, but maybe they will later. Or they're connected to happy memories. Or they're extras that you keep just in case. You know, what if I need my black pants, but my favorite ones aren't dry that day? Or they might be for rarer special occasions. If you'd like to declutter your wardrobe, but one of those reasons is holding you back, try flipping it and thinking of it this way. By the time the clothes do fit again, they might be outdated. So why not treat yourself to clothes that fit well and look great now? You don't have to wait to look and feel amazing. You can do it now. You could keep one or two sentimental pieces if you like, but if there are more than that, then you might want to journal your happy memories instead and take a photo of the clothes before you donate them so you can tuck them into the journal and remember them that way. Don't forget if you have less clothing, that means you have less washing and you can keep up with your laundry every week more easily. Because you have less to wash, then your favorites will be available more often. And you can rent beautiful pieces for special occasions for a fraction of the cost of buying, which gives you more space in your wardrobe and a different outfit for every special occasion. Fantastic when you're looking at family photo albums. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you're ready for next steps, you might want to join my free Neat and Tidy Challenge where we focus on one small space each month to help you organize your home the easy way. I will leave a link so you can find it easily. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. My number one tip for a more 